So as usual, we'll start with the economic calendar. And we'll go straight to Tuesday. So that's Tuesday the 8th of March. We've already had a few reports of medium importance that were released overnight at uh, midnight and half past midnight uh, to do with the British market and the Australian market. But again, we are focusing on the Euro-US dollar. So we're looking for reports that would affect the euro -US. So that's our reports of low importance. Uh, at 6.45, which is just two minutes ago, we had the Swiss unemployment rate. But again, we're focusing on the Euro-US dollar. And they're all reports of low importance. So basically, there are no reports coming out today that would affect the Euro-US dollar. Obviously, there are, there's always unplanned reports coming out. So these are all planned economic reports that are due out. But sometimes things can happen out of the blue, it could, which could just affect the market without uh, any prior warning. But in terms of planned reports, there are no planned reports that could affect the market we are focusing on, which is the Euro US dollar. So we'll go straight to the chart. So as usual, we'll start with the one year daily chart to see if any swing trading opportunities. And as we can see, the moving average 50 was broken on the 13th of January on the upside. And the market has been trending above the moving average 50 since the 13th of January. So the only opportunity is to buy from a string trading point of view is to buy at the 26, sorry, the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement there. But again, you have to be aware that that was broken once on the 4th of November and it came back down. So we'll approach that with caution. So we'll wait till it gets there and decide what to do. From a sell point of view, we can sell just below the moving average 50, which is quite a way below, or at the 38.2 retracement. But basically, there are no obvious swing trading opportunities uh, at the moment. So let's have a look at the day trading. So we'll just come down to the two days, five minutes chart. And we can see here on the two days, five minutes chart, you know, yesterday the market initially went up then came crashing back down. And it's just been going sideways since. We can see that uh, at about four o'clock in the morning it broke the pivot point and came straight back down. I'll just make that a bit bigger. So we can see that the most recent high in the market was there was thirteen nine eight nine. Because what we're saying is that the market from that high started to fall. It was trending down then, then started to go sideways there. And then went up, broke the pivot point from the new high there, and it started to go down. So from a buying point of view, uh, if you want to play it safe, which is always the best thing to do, is to buy just above that high and keep out of the indecision in the market around here. So the first pending order will place to be just above that high at 39.91. So we'll buy if the market breaks that high, knowing that it's, it's completely cleared all the indecision in the market here. And from a sell point of view, we'll sell just below the first support. Oops. 
you can see the first support here is 13,933, so we'll sell that there. So those will be our pending orders to buy just above the high there for today at 13,991. I will sell just below the first support at 13,931. The other thing we could do, we could place a, a line just below the low for today. The low there was 13, oops, 13,956. Yeah, 13,956. Have a look at that low. That's thirty nine five eight, and that's thirty nine five. Represent the support of the market, because usually, like I said, once they're within one or two points, uh, plus or minus two points from each other, it could form a support or a resistance point. So. You can see this low points in the market are uh, about two points within each other. That low there is 13,957, 958, and that's 13,956. So that could be regarded as a support of the market. So another possible opportunity to trade on this market would be to sell just below that support there at 13.954. So those would be uh, potential trading points. So to either buy just above the high of today or to sell just below the support of the market at 13.954 or you sell just below the first support. Got a question here. Hi, Kemi. Hi, morning, Remy. Morning. Um, Remy, when would you um, decide on... Um, the time to trade and by that I mean say for instance you were up quite early maybe at uh, three or two o'clock and um, you I mean your support might have been in exactly the same place um, and then your resistance would have been somewhere else I mean you can depending on your trading would plan would that still or... have been vast high yes uh, I so mean, in your trading have... plan, so sorry? sorry, in your trading plan, you have to also include the times you're going to trade. Yeah, because you have to decide where you want to trade regularly. Because sometimes, I think the the beauty about trading, it, it all eventually evens out. Because sometimes, if, say for instance, if you decide you're going to trade from midnight when the pivot points come out, mm -hmm. because you you know sometimes the market would have gone through the period points by the time you wake up in the morning. Yeah. And if you decide to trade early in the mornings, you'll have found that sometimes, uh, I mean, there's no hard and fast rules. Because uh, sometimes you can trade at midnight and have a few losses before the money, morning comes in. Mm. Or sometimes you trade from midnight and you catch the market before the morning comes, when you know the market would have gone past everyone. Mm. So yeah, there's there's no hard and fast rule. Uh, so that would it, yeah. so, but that would still have been right if. Um, yeah, if you were trade, if you're up, um, I mean, I, I for instance, I had, I usually trade at midnight. So I placed a trade to buy there. So I've lost twenty points on that trade. Mm. So yeah, yes, you just again, you always have to remember that. Um, you are going to have losses. You know, you're not going to get it right all the time. It's just the consistency that is the key. But it's not going to be 100%. So yes, if you were trading at midnight, it would have been perfectly fine to buy just above the pivot point because at that point, 
that's where the sideways trend was. So it would have been perfectly fine to buy there. It's no problem. But that would have been fine. And and yes, yes, you have some losses. That's that goes without saying. But I think the other thing too is that uh, yes, it's just making sure that we'll, if you decide that's the way you're going to trade on a regular basis, then you find it would even itself out. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, the the strategy themselves don't change. So yeah. It, you will still do the same thing whether you're trading at midnight or trading in the morning. So you have still gone for that, bought above the pivot point, and if you if the market kept on going up fine, if it didn't, uh, that's, <laughs> that's tough. But yeah, I think that's the key. So I think the two, two things to 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 emphasize there is one uh, is the consistency. Uh, you have a plan in terms of the time you trade. Uh, and be consistent with that, and you still have your, you know, after since you stop. So whether you start trading at midnight or six in the morning, it's still the same thing. You know, within that 24 hours after three consecutive losses, you stop. And obviously remembering that yes, you know, you're not going to get a hundred percent success rate. You know, I always say if you get a 40 percent success rate with good money management, you'll still do very well. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. Cheers. Sure. Good morning, Martha. I can see your hand up, Martha. I don't know if you got your mic on. Martha. Can you hear me, Martha? Oh, yes. Uh, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Where, um, the, the proposed pending buy order should be placed at. Good morning. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sorry, come again. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, come again. Yeah, the question is where should the pending be placed oh, okay. for today. Yeah, let me go through that again. Um, okay. Now let me just yeah, mute you up because it's, it's yeah. echoing back. <laughs> yeah, so like I was saying, the, because you can see here when the market was initially going sideways, then it started to go up, broke the pivot point at that point, then from the high point there, there was 13,989, so that was the high at that time, 13,989, and then you can see it's fallen back down, broken the moving average 50, and it's fallen back down. Now, obviously, the market can either go uh, one of three ways. It can either just keep going down or go sideways or go back up. But the there's a risk that if it starts to go sideways, it could get back to the pivot point here, break it again and come back down and just keep going sideways. So it would be safer to make sure it's cleared at least that high before we buy instead of buying just above the pivot point. So it's safer to buy just above the high, two points above that, which would take you to 3991. I just above that high there, 13,991. So that's to be that's the rationale behind buying at that point. We want to clear this in case the market just keeps going sideways around there. So that's our pending buy order, 13,991. And to sell, like I said, the market has formed a support here. Uh, usually, if the market gets to a point. Uh, plus or minus two points within each other and the market holds, you can say it's from the support or resistance. So you can see here the market from the low here of 13.957. There's another low there of 13,958 and another low there 
of 3956. You can see they are within plus or minus to the. So we can say the market has formed a support there. And we're just going to sell two points below that at 13.954. Or you can go for the extremely cautious part of selling just below the first support at 13.931. But we'll go with this one of 13.954. So that will be our two pending orders to sell just below the support at 13.954 or to buy just above the high of the day at 13.991. Again, that's the beauty of having these sessions for two weeks um, because you, you see that when it comes to day trading, each day I always say is different. Um, the dynamics of the market can change and you have to have a, a logical way and a methodical way of deciding where to place your trades. Um, it's a dynamic market, uh, and again, as you saw yesterday, what we saw in the morning was vastly different from what we saw later on in the day. So it's just a question of having a, a way you assess the market and a plan of calmly figuring out which way to trade and where best to place your trades. Okay. <clears throat> 